Okay, welcome back. Now, we move into the next topic being learning. For this, we're going to start talking about a very specific field that dominated psychology for about 40 or 50 years. From the 1920s till about the 1970s, you have a specific theory dominating ruling psychology, and this is the theory of behaviorism. So, as we talk about learning, we're going to tie it to the lessons of behaviorisms. So, a quick introduction to behaviorism. This guy's with a scientific backbone of psychology. You have the work of many individuals pioneer, pioneering this field of study. But for now, let's introduce the concept of an individual called John B. Watson, Mr. Behaviorism, who was the father of the field. He was influenced by the work of a Russian scientist called Ivan Pavlov, who discussed about how he noticed a trend of learning in his dogs and Watson borrowed from Pavlov to try to visualize it to explain everything in psychology. He didn't believe anything related to Freud or the unconscious. He just wanted to believe that everything could be studied, everything could be observed, and everything could be scientifically proven. So these are the lessons of what we call classical conditioning, and this is the work of John B. Watson. And it's very simple. Behaviorists try to make this complicated purposefully because they wanted to make psychology a hard science, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Let's simplify it. You have only two components being a stimulus and a response. A stimulus really can be anything. Anything can be a stimulus. Any event, any action, any person can be a stimulus as long as it evokes a response. So let's put it like this. In the morning when you are sleeping, you hear the alarm go on and there's a natural response to it. The alarm goes off, the response to it is to turn it off and either go back to sleep or what you should do, turn it off and just get up and start doing your things. So the alarm is the stimulus response, turn it off and start doing something else, right? Just like that, we can use it to understand the concept of classical conditioning. So you really have five components, but they are divided in two areas being stimulus and response. Within stimulus, you have a neutral stimulus. You can read the definition, but neutral means like no kind of action followed by this stimulus. Unconditioned stimulus, what I feel like is best explained as a natural stimulus, and a conditioned stimulus, which is like a learned stimulus. You have those three in one main category being stimulus, and then you have another category being the response, which is divided between the unconditioned or the natural response and the conditioned response or the learned response. So let's point this out in a couple examples and review it if you need to better get a hang of it. Look, neutral stimulus and conditioned stimulus in essence are the same thing. Okay? The difference is initially the neutral is not creating any kind of response. What creates a response is an unconditioned stimulus. Natural stimulus creates a natural response. If those two are paired together often and often and often, in time what was initially neutral becomes conditioned. And the conditioned stimulus leads to a conditioned response. For example, Pavlov talked about his dogs. Ivan Pavlov talked about how he would feed his dogs and in order to do so because he had so many dogs, he had to ring a bell. So the dogs would come in together as he would ring the bell and then he would feed them. He noticed a trend. Apparently, every time that he rang the bell, the dogs came in, but the dogs were already salivating. You know how when you're hungry and you go to a restaurant, you smell the food, the, or the mere thought of the food makes you salivate? This happens to dogs when they thought of food. So Pavlov noticed one thing. Every time I ring the bell, the dogs come in and they start to salivate. They salivate because they're expecting food. But the trend happens so often that it continued happening. When you had the bell initially, it was meant to just get the dogs together. The food made the dogs salivate. But when you have the bell and the food paired together often and often and often, Pavlov noticed, I can just take off the food and the bell by itself is going to make my dog salivate. What do you did? You conditioned or you taught something 
in a classical manner, it's almost like accidentally learned or taught something. Let's think of a couple examples. First, a very common example for classical conditioning, when you see lightning and you hear the thunder, people tend to cringe. People tend to feel uneasy about it. But what is really the terrifying thing? Think about it, it's the noise. The noise of the thunder is what really makes you feel afraid. But if the noise of the thunder and the sight of lightning go together, we tend to associate both and the mere sight of lightning makes us cringe. So, the lightning by itself is not really scary. What is scary is the noise, right? So the noise naturally makes us feel afraid or makes us feel uneasy. But if we're used to see the lightning and hear the thunder together often and often and often in time, just the mere sight of lightning, remember, it will evolve. It's enough to make us feel oh, uneasy. We have a lot of examples of this. Let me tell you one personal that could really be helped out to understand this. Now, this is a sensitive example, all right? I used to work at a psychiatric clinic. There was a time when a lady came in and she had PTSD because she had been sexually abused. But there was a very, very specific pattern with this lady. Apparently, the abuser was drinking wine and she could smell the wine when this happened. So this is the thing that happened to her. The smell of wine was a trigger that brought back all these memories. Not so much the memory of the person, not so much the memory of the abuser, but the smell of wine. So let's do it one more time. The wine by itself is not supposed to trigger any kind of traumatic memories. The wine is a neutral stimulus. What is triggering all this really memories? What is creating those memories? Is the memory of the attack. This is what really brings back all those awful memories. But if you have the smell of wine and the memory of the attack linked together often and often and often, in time, the smell of wine became a conditioned stimulus, which led to the conditioned response of the traumatic memories coming back. According to Watson, classical conditioning could be used to purposefully create a change and to purposefully understand complex human behavior. That being said, covers classical conditioning.